Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avindian, welcoming you back to Tabletop Simulator with the absolutely amazing area control game Blitzkrieg by Paolo Mori, which promises World War II in 20 minutes. Um, and let's take a look. So this is the game area, and you'll notice it's very, very simple. Uh, the war is divided into five theaters. And each of the theaters is divided into campaigns. Uh, players will take turns placing tiles uh, until a row is completed, in which case that campaign has ended and victory points are awarded. If a player gets all the way to one side or the other of one of the theater tracks, that closes the entire theater and anything left is awarded, including all the bonus spaces. So that can be a very powerful incentive if you can manage to make it work. Uh, the game ends when one of two things happens. First of all, when you have to draw a tile and you can't, that player loses the game automatically. Or when someone reaches 25 points. If the Axis reaches 25 points because they go for first in the game, the Allies get one more turn. If the allies reach 25 points, the game ends immediately at the end of that turn. And the axis doesn't get another turn. Um, the tabletop simulator sim that you see in front of you does include, for those who are so inclined, a solo mode, which is also included in the box. I believe David Turchi designed the solo mode, but I'm not positive. Um, there's also an expansion included with the Tabletop Simulator game called, uh, the Nippon expansion, which does some alt history, like what happens if after World War II, Germany and Japan have a falling out, and Japan has Godzilla, um, which is a different take on a war game, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, let's dive in, uh, I'm gonna do... Uh, I compulsively shuffle the tiles in this game. I do the same when I'm actually playing the game because you always want to make sure the tiles are nice and mixed up so you can't predict what's going to come because it's a big part of the game. So each side is going to draw three tiles. And I keep doing this. I've played hundreds of hours of Tabletop Simulator and yet I always forget you want to change color and not team. Uh, so... Every tile in the game falls into one of three categories. Armies, navies, and air forces. And these determine where you can place a tile. So for instance, this boaty boy here is a level two navy that can be placed on any blue space or any brown and blue space. Armies, uh, I don't have any right now uh, with the German player. I might with the Allied player, but I'll show you them if that happens. Uh, the armies can only be placed on brown spaces or brown and blue spaces. And air forces can be placed anywhere you want to. They're not as powerful as army or navies, but they're a lot more flexible. So every turn progresses pretty much the same way in five easy to remember steps. Although the game does, the sim does helpfully give you some of the more important uh, pieces of the manual, it doesn't give you the whole manual. Uh, so you may have to actually look it up if you wish to do so. So every turn consists of four easy steps. You place a token from your reserve, aka your hand. The actual board game has a little screen that you put your tiles behind. But in a context of tabletop simulator, you just put it into your hand. Notice I cannot see the allied player's tiles. Uh, so you place a tile. You do immediately whatever the effect is on the space. If there is one, some spaces are blank like this one. Then you move the theater track toward your side, however many spaces. So if I played this two ship, it would move two spaces. And last but certainly not least, you must draw a tile from your bag. There is no hand limit. There's actually ways to get more tiles in your hand, but you always have to be able to draw at least one tile. 
the more tiles you have, the better of an advantage that you can enjoy. So, let's talk strategy. Access always goes first, which makes sense because they started the war, right? Um, I don't have a very strong initial hand. Uh, tiles are generally range from one to three. There's a couple of exceptions to that. There's a couple of zeros in each bag that have a special function. And then there's uh, the generals and admirals, which have a slightly different effect on the game. Um, so this is not a great opening hand. And because it's so predominantly navy, it almost makes sense to start off with the navy. But there's an important consideration, which is the bonus bases in the game. Bonus bases each offer a specific function, and I'm going to go over them really quickly right now. If you see a plus with a number, like here or here, this automatically gives you a bonus movement on the theater track. So in addition to whatever the tile is, you get to move additional spaces. The factories here are what are called industrial tiles. Uh, these allow you to draw an extra tile from your bag and keep it in your hand thus making your, your reserve larger. Anywhere you see a shield with a number, this refers to automatic war victory points. You just get those right off the bat. Uh, bombing campaigns are kind of the opposite of the industrial in that you cause the other player to put a token from their hand back into the bag, uh, reducing their hand size. This, you'll notice, has these two arrows, which means you could increase anywhere but this theater by three spaces. Um, there's a couple that let you do both. Uh, like this one here, you can get... Oh, I didn't mention research. There's another bag of tokens called special weapons. And these are extremely powerful. That you get to add into your um, bag to draw later. Um, some... Spaces let you do both. Arguably, this space here is the most valuable in the game because you get two bonuses. And I believe you always get both. Yeah. Oh, this is actually even better. That's how this works. Okay, see, I was mistaken. You get to draw the random research tile and put it in your hand. Not put it in your bag. And that is just massive. That's a huge advantage. Um, because these are so powerful and game-breaking that the ability to use it right away is a pretty powerful benefit. But we're very early in the game, so we get to pick a theater, and we always start in the top row and decide what we want to do. If we want to get off to a quick start, there's two victory points sitting here for the taking. <clears throat> That's tempting. But... And this is just me, but I have always found it difficult to pass up the first turn expansion to your hand size. So I'm going to take this number two ship and I'm going to place it like so. So the first thing I do after I place the tile is I do what the space says, which is I draw another tile from the bag. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Man, I cannot draw a good hand. Oh, I'll just have a better hand later. Then I move two spaces toward the axis side, this Teutonic cross. And then I draw an additional tile to end my turn. You will always draw at least one tile every turn. Um, this is a special unit that we'll talk about next turn in case I decide to use it. But I want to keep the game flowing. So it is now the ally side and this is interesting so they have an army represented by the tank a general and generals are interesting they add one to everything else that you've already deployed so you want to place this last and then an ammo which is in a c space this is such a crappy hand i'm gonna make an, a very easy decision i'm gonna play this car this tile here I draw a tile from my bag. Thankfully, I get a better result there. Move one space toward the ally, and then I draw an additional tile to end my turn. So I've got a very strong land hand, and I'm going to be hanging out as Admiral for a while. 
Because it's only worth one point if I don't have other units in the particular campaign. So this is a blitzing unit that I could play if I wanted to. Which immediately allows you to play an additional tile right away. And golly. That could instantly give me a theater win. Or a campaign win in Western Europe. That is not to be turned down. So I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to play my Blitz token. I immediately get the benefit, which is I get to draw a research tile. What did I get? The nuclear bomb. Oh, that's crazy good. We're going to chuck that in the bag and shuffle it up. And then I immediately play another tile from my hand, and I'm going to play one of my boats. My bonus here is I get an instant victory point, so the access is on the board first. And I've actually closed this theater, or this campaign, sorry, by completing this first row. No, I don't move the token here because it's worth zero, but I do here. And once a campaign closes, it depends on which side of the track is on is the winner. I don't get any bonus points. I didn't advance far enough for that, sadly, but I do get two victory points. One, two. And now beginning next turn, we can start using this row, which is worth a little bit more. I'm going to draw a tile. And because of the blitz, I've basically forfeited the advantage I had of having four tiles in my hand. But I now have a very, a very flexible role, if not a very powerful one. Back to the allies. What would I like to do here? If I play this army here, I can get myself a bonus point as I close out the theater. That is not to be trifled with, and it also puts me much further along on the path to closing out the entire theater. And that could be huge. This is a this is a war swinging theater. It's got the largest victory point total in the game. In the game, so I'm going to take this tank without hesitation and drop it here. So the first, so the bonus is I instantly change it by one. For the tank, I do it three more times campaign is finished so i get two victory points for the allies plus i get a bonus one because of how far we got on the track so the game is now tied i draw another tile and it's one of the allied blitz tiles very interesting every uh, both sides have the exact same tiles they're just colored differently and they have different like shapes like you can see the German cross on the uh, on the fighter, or a a panther instead of whatever tank they use for the Allies. I can't remember if it's the the T thirty four or an American tank or a British tank. Um, because this is definitely a British symbol. This is what the British had on their fighters. Um, right. I gotta tell you. This sounds like a pretty great way to keep things going. Because this is important. You can place it on any row, on any space your heart desires within a row. It's just you can only put it in certain rows. So, yeah. Man, getting another industrial boon, especially because I just lost it because of that's such a good decision, and it gets me closer to completing, to pushing along Western Europe a bit farther. So I'm going to take this tank, drop it here, draw a tile because of the effect, and look what we just pulled out of the bag. And you saw me shuffle it. I definitely shuffled it. This is just luck. And this could be game-changing. So the nuclear bomb gives you seven spaces on any one theater track, but you lose two on every other one that hasn't been closed yet. So this can basically hand you a theater victory if played at the right time. And I think it counts as an Air Force. So you can place it anywhere.
Oh, it's considered an army. There we go. So you can't place it on a sea space. I don't care. That's an awesome draw. Uh, then I advance it by one. And I draw my normal tile. Things have already changed dramatically for the axis. This is... This is very spicy. Um... I do not want to close this particular... I don't want to close this theater. That would be awful for as the allies. I could close the theater instantly if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Instead, I'm going to keep, a, keep it up in Eastern Europe. I'm going to place this tanky boy right here, and I get two research tiles from the bag. So I'm going to draw two. And I got a couple of cool things. I got an aircraft carrier. Uh, this lets you also do a bombing effect, which is pretty spicy. And I get a super tank, uh, which unfortunately doesn't give you any effects from the battle space, but is obviously, it's worth five. Uh, and then we move one closer, unless I did already. I did not. One. And then we draw an additional tile. Um, as the axis, I can have this really strange... I have a very, very strange hand, but I could easily win Eastern Europe with a bit of luck. Oh no, sorry, I can't win Eastern Europe. I can stop the allies from winning it, but there's not a huge amount of value in delaying the inevitable. That's just what I found. I have I have simply found that it just doesn't make sense to me to delay the enemy when there's so many other theaters. Um, if you don't get started right away in opposing the other side, it's best to almost just focus your attention somewhere else. Now, I've got a couple of opportunities here. If I can push things farther in Western Europe, I can give myself the victory using the A-bomb in Western Europe. It would obviously come with a cost, but it's also eight points and everything else in the theater. So I think I'm going to keep pushing in Western Europe. Because remember, the Allies don't know that I have the nuke. They know I got something out of the bag. They don't even know that I've gotten it out of the bag. Um, because normally the screen doesn't even let you see the color of the tile. Um, which this doesn't either, which is good. They all look the same. So I did a bombing run. Um, I am going to grab me a D4. And we're going to roll to see which card I discarded. Just because I think I remember which it is. Now, it's important to know that you don't lose the tile. It just goes back into your bag. Um, but that's obviously, like, it could be game winning if the right one is in there. So I'm going to go... Whee! It's one, two, three, four... Uh, tile just goes right back into the bag. You don't get to see what it is. You can't stop that from happening, unfortunately. So you would just tell the other player, discard uh, the first tile in your hand or the fourth from my perspective, and they'd say fine. Um, and then last but certainly not least, we move three spaces on the Western Europe track. One, two, and three. 
<clears throat> I can win the Western Theater next turn with a nuke. <clears throat> that wouldn't be without consequence, but it would be a huge leg up in the game. What do the allies want to do here? They've got their sights on a big victory in Eastern Europe. And I think they're going to push on it and hope that the Tile Gods are kind to them and give them some more land units. Or air forces. Um... That is what's going to happen. So I'm going to play the Blitz <clears throat> on the empty space. No, I'm not. I'm going to place it here. I get a victory point, but I don't get to move any farther. And then I place a ship, which then moves us two points. There's no benefit to the space itself. I've completed another campaign, and I gain three more victory points. One, two, three. Pretty solid. I've only got two in my hand, though, and that was the worst possible draw. These are awful tiles to play as the first in a new area. They're awful. Oh, well, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And we're going to switch over to the axis. And they're thinking, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can win the theater by dropping the bomb. However, it's also a loss of two everywhere else on the board. So I need to be very careful about this. Is it worth it? To give myself a massive early edge and then suffer everywhere else. That's not good. And right now... I'd rather save this. And maybe that's a mistake. I mean, gosh, if we play this, it would be 10 victory points. And it's not like I'm going to win Eastern Europe, which is the only theater that's worth as that has as much value there. But it cleaves it to win in the Middle East. Um, and that's arguably an even more powerful way to use it. But here's the bad news. All it takes is the allies to get lucky on lucky, lucky on a bombing run. And look, they're sitting on two tiles. I have three. They're probably pretty PO'd about that. There's a really good chance they're going to try to do a bombing run next turn. And the question is, there's a 1 in 3 chance I'd lose my nuke. If I... And I wouldn't lose it permanently. It just goes back in the bag. But I'd, I would never know when it would come back up again. So that's not ideal either. So the question is, do I take the huge lead now, but make me worse off everywhere else for the rest of the game, but get a big benefit right now... I kind of think I have to do it. Go big or go home, right? So, kaboom. Uh, some city in Western Europe, maybe Paris, is gone from the map. The tile itself is worth nothing. So, this theater gets an increase of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, the axe has actually won the entire theater. Before we do that, though, everywhere else is two away from the axis, so that's one, two. That kind of hurts. Two, 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 and done. So there was a definite cost to that. 
However, we instantly get eight victory points because we've won the entire theater. That's three for this and five for this. Plus the two bonus points is where I got 10 from. So I go from three to 13. And that's not where it stops. Because I won the theater, I get the bonus for every single unoccupied space. So I get a three bonus in every theater, in any theater, sorry, except for this one. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and do it in the uh, Pacific Ocean. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And I get to draw a tile from the special weapons bag and put it in my hand. And it's a blitzing tank. That's pretty spicy. I like that. And then they draw their regular tile at the end. And so their hand is pretty weak now, but they won a theater and they are now well in front in the game. Now, as the allies, I'm pretty mad right now. Because I can't use this at all. This is now close off to everybody. This will no longer move. Western Europe is settled. And I was kind of eyeing that space for myself. The fact is, my hand total is pretty garbage. And I... I mean, I can't even put two, two tiles here right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take this arm, this general, and put it here. I want them to feel the pain that I just felt. So we're going to go. And they got four. This would be one, two, three, four. I'd ask the, the access player to discard their tile, and they just lose a tile. And we'll shake up the bag. <clears throat> we do increase this by one. And then that, and then I get to draw a tile. And I got a ship. Um, so we're going to be forced to abandon Eastern Europe for a bit. Which really sucks, but I can't do anything about that right now. Um, as the Axis... It is highly unlikely that I can win in Eastern Europe. I can take away some bonus points from the Allies, but I have to ask myself, is it worth it to do that when instead I could do other things? <clears throat> and this is the ultimate jerk move. But I kind of love it because it is the ultimate jerk move. I'm going to place this ship right here. And I'm going to roll the d4. And a 1 or 2 is the one on the left. A 3 or 4 is one on the right. I got a 3. Boom. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And this is like a nightmare scenario for the allied player. Uh, it then moves one closer to them, and they draw a tile out of the back. That was a pretty big dick move, and I kind of like it. Because now I am basically only have one unit I can play. Um... We could go to Africa and the Middle East. I need industrial production, but it's just not available right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here. So you get to move one plus another one because the space was a bonus. So I'm at least getting myself a bonus when I finish this off, right? And then I get to draw a tile from the bag. It's another ship. Great. 
No, I am immediately deeply puzzled by this as the Axis player. Why would he not be advancing in Eastern Europe? This is his prize to win whenever he wants it, basically, with the right tile. Oh, wait, he must not have the right tile. <clears throat> Which is obviously very entertaining from our perspective. Um, a bit of an issue, I can't follow up in the Pacific Ocean. I don't have a unit I can legally play there. But I could get there another way. I can basically steal these bonuses from the UK. But I don't know that I also want to burn through my tiles that quickly. So I'm going to do this instead. This is what we call a big brain play. I mean, I could go, you know what? I could go to Southeast Asia and start working on that. But I kind of the idea of coming here before the allies have it settled. We're, we're going to contest things in Africa and the Middle East. I'm going to do this. So I get to do three in any other theater. I'm going to go one, two, three. I've locked in a bonus point for me, provided I don't get pushed back. And then I move one space towards me here. Thus denying the British a bonus point. So it's really a swing of two points if you think about it. I draw a tile and my turn is done. Ahem. <clears throat> As the allies, I am very irritated by that for two huge reasons. One, I'm really hoping that they finish off the first campaign in the Pacific Ocean because then I can use my next turn, use my bow, and try to take this tile or this tile. These would both be awesome, but I need more tiles in my hand quite badly. But I can't, I can't. I can't do that. And if I close this out, the only benefit I gain is that I get to choose it. It gets closed out. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get started in Southeast Asia. Rather than keep pushing on Africa and the Middle East right now. I mean, I could get a, I could get a research tile. But I think I have a better plan. Which is this. I'm going to place this here. I'm going to increase this by one, and then increase this by one. Giving me a stronger position in both theaters. I draw a tile. And you know what? I get my aircraft carrier. Um, that's a pretty spicy move. Um, I know that the allied player is probably licking his lips that he have taken this. I can close this at any time. Oh, I can't go the Mega Dick move, which would have been to use a Blitz to take both tiles spaces. But I can't do that. Um. These trigger air forces, too, it does. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to play my Air Force tile in Africa and the Middle East. To get another research tile, which is always exciting. What did I get? Ooh, the spy. So the spy lets the spy is actually yeah it lets you copy whatever someone else has played. Very spicy. Very high quality. Uh, and then the Axis is going to pull this one closer to them. See, when I play this, it'll actually pull it all the way toward the center. And that actually gives us both points. Which is certainly preferable to only the Allies getting points, right? So we're going to shuffle, 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 draw. I didn't get my spot. But I got my, I got my number three Navy, which is almost as good. <clears> Ahem. <throat> 
I have a shockingly strong incentive not to be the person to close either of these first theaters. I want my crack at getting a better thing. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. First, what's on the tile happens. I conduct a bombing run, uh, one through three. Um, if it is a four, I will reroll. Uh, hang on, I didn't do it right. That's a four. There you go, that's what you have to do. To get several rolls in, you have to highlight it. It's a one. So this tile goes back in his bag, and he's kind of sad about that, but whatever. <clears throat> then we move by two. One, two. And we get a victory point. Technically, the victory point should have come first, but whatever. And then I get a further three, four victory points. My one bonus plus three for closing the theater. No, I'm not. I'm an idiot. I wanted to put it over here. Sorry, guys. Um, I wanted to put it here. So this goes back to... And then that is not closed. Because I don't want to give the Axis a bigger advantage than they've already got by stealing more tiles. So I'm going to put that here, which then moves this by two, doesn't close the theater, and gives me two victory points. So I do that. Everything else ends up the same, but I'd actually said I was going to do something and did the opposite. So that was quite foolish of me. And then I draw a tile. This game really hates me. Um, I hates the allies today. All right. Um, so this actually sets them up perfectly. No, it doesn't. Intriguing. So this actually could play right into the allies' hands. And I really don't want them getting parity with me. I can't take Eastern Europe. Can I? I can at least deny them two bonus points. And that's not nothing. <clears throat> yeah, this is actually a real pickle for me. Because I don't want to hand the allies um, basically free industrial tiles. And I have to place in a land space. That kind of forces me to go to Eastern Europe. Or to be the one that closed out Southeast Asia. But I don't want to do that either because I don't want to give them points. So I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this tank blitz. This is going to move it by three. One, two, three. I then immediately play another tile from my reserve, which is my hand. And I'm going to put in my general. So this increases this by two. And I get to move any other theater by three. I'm going to go one, two, three. And then I draw a tile from the bag. And I get a ship. Um, it is what it is. Now, here's my issue. I have an admiral... No, I'm going to play the Admiral here. It's the best place. It's the best thing to do. So I get a victory point for occupying the space. This increases by four. So it's going to go one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to go ahead and get two more victory points for closing out the first campaign. I'd actually close out this theater with a decent draw. Uh, show me the tile. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. I can think of a whole lot worse tiles to have drawn right now. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, 
Where do I want to place my ship? Can't put it in Eastern Europe. Nothing I can do about that. If I close out the Pacific Theater or Africa and the Middle East, I'm handing the Allies an advantage. Oh, that would be cold as fuck. I love it. Yeah, I'm gonna go... <laughs> and the Allied player is just loses his shit right now. He basically doesn't get a turn. Is what just happened. Because you draw at the end of your turn. And that's really set them back. So here, here's the entire ally turn. Watch carefully. Done. Oh, but my gosh. That's a huge one. Mmm. That's a changer right there. Um, that's a big tile in the Allies' hands. Okay. We're still in this weird race not to decide. Which is which is absurd, I know. But it's true. Um I don't want neither one of us wants to make a move here until we have to. Cause then the other player is gonna get that huge advantage of having more tiles in their hand. Uh, they're going to go ahead and use this bomber right here and get themselves like this. Who cares? But the two victory points is very nice. And their draw tile. And it's their crappy little tank. Oh, well. Where do I put you, Mr. Tank? Would it be enough? One, two, three, four, five. It'd get me some pretty good points, but then instantly hand the Axis the big advantage. I don't want that. I'd rather just try to win Eastern Europe um, with this unit. I mean, I guess I could put the the tank here and win Southeast Asia, which would then basically force them to either help me in Eastern Europe or something else. Yeah, I guess I will do that. I'm going to put it here. Uh, it just goes right to the end. I don't get the benefit of the space, but there was no benefit, so who cares? And that's six points for the Allies. So they're going to go from 12 to 18. And they draw a tile. It's a tank. It's going to go in Eastern Europe. And here's the funny thing. There is actually an argument to be made to close out this theater or this, uh, this what you call it this campaign nah he's gonna grab the two points and move this back by one one two very very close game i'm now filled with a slight sense of dread that i've actually moved the wrong token at once but i don't think i did uh please let me know in the comments if i did um all right so they're going to go ahead and claim their prize, which is seven points. Six for this, one for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
And just like that, the Allies won the game. Did this take 20 minutes? I don't think it did. But then again, I did spend a lot of time talking through each decision I made. Um, technically, I do have to draw a tile. Because if I couldn't legally draw a tile, I would have lost. But no. Yeah, game's over. Allies win. Suck it, Axis. That was very competitive. And it all came down to... This weird stalemate in both the Pacific and Africa and the Middle East because both sides were obsessed with not giving the other side the industrial uh, advantage. Um, so then everyone just started putting units into Eastern Europe and that eventually gave... It eventually pushed the Allies over the top. Um, good stuff. Uh, do you let me know what you think of Blitzkrieg? Um, it's... Honestly, if someone sat down and said, Avi, I like war games, but I haven't played one since Risk, can you recommend one that plays really quickly so I can see if I still like them or not? I would hand them Blitzkrieg first, and after you've played that, I would say, you're ready to graduate to Shores of Tripoli. This is my new gateway game for, for two-player war games. Not because Shorts of Tripoli isn't brilliant, but this design is just so easy to pick up. But there's so much depth to it that I can't recommend this highly enough. Um, this game is currently out of print, so you're going to have to go to Board Game Geek and buy a copy or find a copy on eBay or something. But friends, trust me when I tell you it's worth every cent. Um, that's actually how I got my copy about mine on, on Board Game Geek. Your friendly local game store might have a copy if you're fortunate, so give them a call and say, hey, I heard about this cool game called Blitzkrieg, World War II in 20 minutes, and this amazing gentleman named Avindian recorded this video, and I want to buy it. And not only are you going to get a copy of a great game, but maybe you convince your friendly local game store owner to, to watch my videos. And I'd be pretty happy about that. Uh, and I hope you would too. So that concludes our game. Uh, next week, we're going to be playing 13 Days about the Cuban Missile Crisis. That's another wonderful two-player game. And if you're like, oh, Avi, I like war games. This one was way too short. Um, don't forget war, war of the Ring is right around the corner. And that is not a short war game. It's not as long as For the People. For the People, I think, is the longest war game I've played since a game I don't have anymore called Napoleon in Europe, which is basically worthless at a power player kind of less than seven. But mwah, I love that game. Uh, I am not playing it on Tabletop Simulator. I cannot imagine you're trying to keep seven players straight. Um, but yeah, War of the Ring is, is two weeks away. So I hope you're getting hyped about that. For now, though, this is it for Tabletop Simulator. Thank you very much. And until next time, this has been Indian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.